In this lecture, I'm going to solve these two questions. Let's start with question number one. 20% of all telephones of a certain type are submitted for service while under warranty. Of these, 60% can be repaired, whereas the other 40% must be replaced with new units. If a company purchases 10 of these telephones, what is the probability that exactly two will end up being replaced under warranty? So this is the question. And as you can see, there are many events that are happening in this question. So let's name those events. Let's say that A is the event that a phone is submitted for repair. So A is the event that a phone is submitted for repair. And let B the event that the phone is replaced with a new unit. So B is the event that phone is replaced. And let's say that C is the event that a phone is submitted for repair, that a phone is submitted for repair and is replaced. Okay, so this is how I'm defining these events. So that means probability of C will be equal to probability of A intersection B because C is the event that a phone is submitted for repair and is replaced with a new unit. Now let's see what all probabilities we are given in the question. So we are given that 20% of all telephones of a certain type are submitted for service while under warranty. So that means we are given that probability of A which is the event that a phone will be submitted for repair is equal to 20%. So probability of A is 0 0.20. Of these, 60% can be repaired, whereas the other 40% must be replaced with new units. So that means we are given that the probability of B, given that A has already happened, is equal to 0 0.40. As you can see, it is given in the question that out of the phones that are submitted for repair, 40% must be replaced with new units. So that means it is equal to probability of event B, given that the event A has already happened. So this probability is equal to 0 0.40, right? And we know that probability of C is equal to probability of A intersection B. Well, we can use the conditional probability here. So we can write this A intersection B as probability of B intersection A multiplied by probability of A, right? We can do this. And this is because the conditional probability formula is this. Probability of B given that A has already happened is equal to probability of B intersection A divided by probability of A. And we know that probability of B intersection A is equal to probability of A intersection B. So it's one and the same thing. You can just cross multiply here. And from here, we have got this term. So we are given that this is equal to 0 0.40 and probability of A is equal to 0 0.20. So this is equal to 0 0.08. So that means the probability that a phone is submitted for repair and is replaced is equal to 0.08. Now let's move to the next part of this question. If a company purchases 10 of these telephones, what is the probability that exactly two will end up being replaced under warranty? So we have already defined C as the event that a phone is submitted for repair and is replaced and is replaced. And we have calculated that the probability of this event is equal to 0 0.08. Now let me define one more random variable, say x. And let's say that x is a random variable which is denoting, so it denotes the number of times c occurs, it denotes the number of times c occurs among 10 phones. Among 10 phones. Okay, so this is how I'm defining the random variable. And what has been asked in the question is that what is the 
probability that x is equal to 2. So this is what we have to find. And we also know that in this case x follows a binomial distribution and the sample size is 10 because the company has purchased 10 phones and the probability of success which is the probability that the C event will occur is equal to 0.08. So now our problem boils down to finding the probability that x is equal to 2 when the x follows a binomial distribution where n is equal to 10 and the probability that is the probability of success is equal to 0.08. I'm sure this won't be difficult now. So we can use the binomial formula ncr p raised to the power r and q raised to the power n minus r. This is when we have to calculate the probability that x is equal to r. So we can use this formula to calculate this probability. So we can say that the probability that x is equal to 2 is equal to 10c2 0.08 raised to the power 2 and 1 minus 0.08 raised to the power 10 minus 2. And solving this expression you will get 0.148. So this is the probability that exactly 2 out of 10 phones will end up being replaced under warranty. The college board reports that 2% of the 2 million high school students who take the SAT each year receive special accommodations because of documented disabilities. Consider a random sample of 25 students who have recently taken the test. In part a, we have to find the probability that exactly one received a special accommodation. So, let's take it step by step. Let's say that x is a random variable. So, let's say that x is a random variable and it denotes the number of students who received accommodation. So, number of students. who received accommodation. So this is how I am defining the random variable x. So this means that as per the information given in the question, x follows a binomial distribution. We are given that n is equal to 25 as the sample of 25 students has been taken and the probability of success is equal to 0 0.02. It is equal to 2%. So x follows a binomial distribution with 25,0.02. This is n and this is p. Now in part a, we have to find the probability that exactly one received a special accommodation. So that means we have to find the probability that x is equal to 1. Well, we can directly use the formula here that we know to calculate the binomial probabilities. Let me write the formula once again for you. So the probability that x is equal to r is equal to ncr p raised to the power r and q raised to the power n minus r where q is equal to 1 minus p. So given this formula we can write probability that x is equal to 1 is equal to 25c1 because n is 25, p is 0 0.02, r is 1 and this is 1 minus 0 0.02 raised to the power 25 minus 1. And solving this expression we get 0 0.308. So this is the probability that exactly one student received the special accommodation. Let's move to part B. In part B we have to find the probability that at least one received a special accommodation. So that means we have to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. Well, there are 26 possible values of x. x can take values 0, 1, 2 till 25. So we have to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. So that means we have to find the probability that x is equal to 2 plus the probability that x is equal to 3 and so on. So let's take an easy route. Let's find the complement of this probability. Then we will subtract that complement from 1 to get this probability. So what would be the complement of this probability? Well, the complement of this probability will be 
probability that x is less than 1. And as we know that x is a discrete random variable, so there is only one value that x can take if it is less than 1 and that is equal to 0. So this is equivalent to calculating the probability that x is equal to 0. And this is the complement. Okay, this is the complement. So this is the complement probability that I am talking about. So if I subtract this probability from 1, I'll get the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. So we have to calculate the probability that x is equal to 0. And let's calculate it. So this is equal to 1 minus probability x is equal to 0. And we know the formula that we can use. So we can write 25c0, 0 0.02 raised to the power 0 and 1 minus 0 0.02 raised to the power 25. So solving this, we get 1 minus 0 0.603 and this is equal to 0 0.3. 397 and that's it this is the answer so the probability that at least one student received an accommodation is 0 0.397 let's move to part c in part c we have to calculate the probability that at least two received a simple accommodation well i'm sure it won't be difficult to do so in this part we have to calculate the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2 well again we can take a different route and let's first calculate the complement of this probability so the complement of this probability is probability that x is less than 2 and as x is a discrete random variable so probability that x is less than 2 is equal to probability that x is equal to 0 plus probability that x is equal to 1. So this is the complement of this probability. So we can write probability that x is greater than or equal to 2 is equal to 1 minus probability that x is equal to 0 plus probability that x is equal to 1 and we already calculated these probabilities while solving for part a and part b in part a we got that probability that x is equal to 1 is 0 0.308 so we can write it here and while we were solving for part b we got the probability that x is equal to 0 as 0 0.603 so this is equal to 1 minus the sum of these two values and this is equal to 0 0.089. Let's move to part D now. In part D, we have to calculate the probability that the number among the 25 who received a special accommodation, that is the value of x, is within two standard deviations of the number you would expect to be accommodated. So the number that we would expect to be accommodated is expected value of x. So in short, we have to calculate the probability that x lies between expected value of x minus 2 times of standard deviation of x and expected value of x plus 2 times of standard deviation of x. Right? This is what the language of question is. So it's saying that what is the probability that the number among the 25 who received a special accommodation? So this is x is within two standard deviation note the word within two standard deviations of the number you would expect to be accommodated and this is equal to expected value of x right so this is how we can write it now to solve this probability we first have to find what is this and what is this and to find these two we need to find the expected value of x and the standard deviation of x so let's find the expected value of x we know that expected value of x is equal to n multiplied by p, n is 25 and p is 0 0.02 so this is equal to 0 0.5 quite straightforward and standard deviation of x is equal to under root of n p q so this is equal to 25 multiplied by 0 0.02 multiplied by 0 0.98 and solving this we get 0 0.7. Now let's substitute these two values into this expression. So it is p expected value of x is 0 0.5 minus twice of 0 0.7 less than equal to x less than equal to 0 0.5 plus twice of 0 
and this is equal to probability that 0 0.5 minus 1.4 so this is equal to minus 0 0.9 less than equal to x less than equal to 1.9 so this expression boils down to this now we know that x is a positive discrete random variable. So what are the values that x can take within this interval? So the values that x can take is that x could be equal to 0 or x could be equal to 1. Well there is no other value that x can take within this interval. And we already know that the probability that x is equal to 0 is 0 0.603 and the probability that x is equal to 1 is 0 0.308. So this probability is equal to 0 0.911. So that means the probability that the number of students who received a special accommodation is within two standard deviations of the expected number is 0 0.911. Okay, now let's move to part E. Suppose that a student who does not receive a special accommodation is allowed three hours for the exam whereas an accommodated student is allowed 4.5 hours. What would you expect the average time allowed to the 25 selected students? So we are given that a student who does not receive a special accommodation is allowed 3 hours for the exam. Well first of all what is the expected number of students who don't receive a special accommodation? Well we know that expected number of students who receive a special accommodation is equal to 0 0.5. So the expected number of students who don't receive special accommodation, who do not receive special accommodation, so this is the expected value, is equal to 25 minus 0 0.5 because 25 is the total number of students. So this expectation is equal to 24.5, right? So these are the expected number of students. So let me write it here only. So expected number of students who do not receive special accommodation. So it is equal to 24.5. I hope this point is clear. Now we have to calculate the average time allowed. So first of all, let's calculate the total time allowed. Okay, so let's calculate the total time for all students. So it is equal to total time. Well, uh, the students who receive a special accommodation are 0 0.5 and they are allowed 4.5 hours. So it's 0 0.5 multiplied by 45 plus 24.5. These are the students who do not receive a special accommodation and they are allowed 3 hours. So multiplied by 3 hours. So this is the total time for all students and this time is equal to 75.75 hours. And we have to calculate the average time allowed. Well, it's simple to calculate the average time now. So to calculate the average time, we have to divide the total time by the number of students. So total time divided by the number of students. And this is equal to 75.75 divided by 25. And this is equal to 3.03. And that's it. This is the answer. So the expected average time per student is 3.03 hours. With this, we are done with this question as well.